We will now explore beam loadings in more detail. Go to the Loadings tab. Click Partition Wall Loads. Here you can set up predefined partition wall loads, such as brick wall. The way the dialog works is very similar to the additional slab loads library. As you can see, there are already various brick wall and block wall loads set up. These are simply based on feedback from users from various countries. The right table shows material layers and its associated parameters, such as unit weight and thickness. The material layers can be changed by clicking on the drop-down menu. To review, edit, or add material, click on Edit Material. In the Material dialog, you can edit unit weight by clicking on the input box. You can also add or delete a material. Click Add. Enter new material, glass, which we may use later. Input unit weight of 80 kN per meter cube. Press Enter. Click OK to save and exit. You can change the layer thickness. The load value is calculated by multiplying the unit weight and thickness. The total load is shown at the bottom. To add load type, click on Add New Load at the bottom. New load will be added. Rename it, say, 30 mm glass. Select a desired color. Click Add New Layer under the Material table. Select a material, choose the newly added glass material. Enter a thickness of 30 mm. Press Enter. The load value and total loads are auto calculated. Click Edit Load References. This can use to quickly change the load type that is already applied to beams in the model in a batch mode based on the selected story or all story. The load name with the same group as the selected source load group can be replaced by the load as specified in the target load group. For example, the client may decide to change all 100 brick wall, which will be source, to 100 block wall, which will be the target. With this function, you don't need to manually delete the wall loads already applied on the beams and then reapply the revised load. If apply selected load to all beams is checked, the target load will be applied to all beams in the selected story. Click Cancel to exit this dialog without any changes. In the main dialog, click OK to save and exit. We will now insert brick wall loading on the beams in Story 1. Tile the 2D and 3D view vertically by going to Views tab. Click Tile Vertical. Make sure the plan view is active by clicking on it. Ensure you are viewing Story 1. If not, double-click on ST01 in the Structure tree to make it active. Select a perimeter beam. The Beam tab will be shown. Click Edit Loads. Alternatively, you can select the beam, right-click, Edit Load. The load editor of the beam will appear. Maximize this window. Load Types tab. Choose the load type to insert, example point load, full uniform load. For now, don't pick any. Load Case and Loads folder is the left pane. Click on the drop-down menu to choose the load case to review or create loads. Existing loads will be listed for selected load case. Click on the load name to select it. The load will be highlighted in the right loads diagram. Right-click will expose menu options to edit, cut, copy, or remove the load. Self-weight is auto-calculated and cannot be removed or edited. Beam and Loads Diagram Graphical representation of the beam and loads, including self-weight and slab loads calculated on beams. Existing loads can also selected by left-click on the diagram. Right-clicking will expose menu options to edit, cut, copy, or remove the load. Since slab load is also auto-calculated, it cannot be edited or removed. This slab load is based on the default yield line or area tributary method. It is advisable to perform verification of such slab loads, especially if the slab is irregular and the yield line on plan view is in doubt. If yield line is not suitable, the alternative is FE load decomposition, which can be activated after FE load decomposition is run for this floor. The reaction that you see in the diagram is simplified to a simply supported beam, outcome of the applied loads shown above. It excludes any secondary beam or transfer columns loads. Hence, it is not the true reaction of the beam, which can only be obtained after running the analysis. Nonetheless, these reaction values are useful 
to check the total loading on this beam based on the above applied loadings. The beam and loads diagram can be rotated by right click and drag. The view can also be orientated by clicking on the 3D cube. In the lower left corner, the global coordinate system are shown with XYZ arrows. The local coordinate system is shown on the member itself. Click on the front view of the cube to reset the view. Load properties on the left. The label, direction, and magnitude for the selected load are shown. These values can be updated, provided it is not self-weight or auto-calculated slab loads. Load type filter layer. Click load type icon to toggle on and off the associated diagrams. Line loads are member self-weight and any uniform line loads. Decomapist slab loads are auto-calculated slab loads. Go to view options. These are settings that controls rendering of member, loads graphics, text height, scaling and frame labels. Example you can toggle on or off transparency depending on your preference. Transparency impacts performance. Show loads as merged. If on, loads under the same load case will be combined into single diagram. Please note to select, delete or edit the load, this option must be switched off. Ensure this option is off. The shortcuts for commonly used view options are also available in the right layers icons. Let us insert a preset 200mm brick wall load on this beam. Go back to load types tab. Pick wall load. Notice that all other load type layers with auto off, leaving only wall load. Ensure G load case is selected in the loads folder at the left. In the load properties, wall load library, pick 200 brick wall Singapore. The wall height is preset to 3000 mm equals to story height. This can be changed. The average load is auto calculated by multiplying wall unit weight and the wall height. Hence, it is really important that you enter the correct wall height. Place the mouse cursor on the beam and left click to create the load. The load will be created and added in the diagram and loads folder. Press escape key to end the creation mode. To edit, simply left click to select the wall load. Wall opening can be inserted by clicking edit openings, which will launch the opening editor. Click add and default opening will be created. You can change the properties and position of the opening by changing the relevant values. Click cancel to exit without the opening. Partial wall loads can be entered by first choosing the measurement type, distance, or percent. Then enter start and end offset. Try some values. Click update and note the diagram will be changed. Set the offsets back to zero. Click update. Show infill wall as line load. If toggle off, the infill wall will be rendered with actual height and thickness. Rotate the view for clarity. Toggle it on again. Click OK to save and exit the loads dialog. On the plan view, the beam with wall load is hatched with a preset color. The wall is also rendered in the 3D view. Loads can also be entered for the entire story, instead of single member, by accessing the story load editor. Ensure ST01 is active and no members are selected by pressing the escape key. Go to loading tab, pick load editor, story 1. The story load editor dialog will appear. Maximize the screen. It is similar to the beam load editor, except that all the members and loads on the active story are shown. The 3D view diagram can be rotated and zoomed similar to the modeling view. Under load types, surface loads are loads or aerial loads that can be applied to slabs and shear walls. Load case and loads folder. Choose the load case to insert the loads. Existing loads will be listed for selected load case. Loads folder resembles the structure tree which organizes loads under member type. Show only loaded members. If checked will omit any members without any loads from listed. Expand the folder. Click on the load name to select it. Right click will expose menu options to edit, cut, copy, or remove the load. Self-weight and decomposed slab loads are auto-calculated and cannot be edited if removed. Member filter. Toggle visibility of member type in the diagram. Example if slab layer is off, then all slabs and loads applied to slabs will be hidden. Switch slab layer off, so it's less cluttered. We will now copy the brick wall load, inserted previously, to some perimeter beams. Ensure G load case is selected in loads folder. In load type filter, toggle off uniform load and decomposed slab loads 
to isolate brick wall loads. Select wall load in the diagram or loads folder, right click, copy. Multiple select three numbers of perimeter beams by holding down the control while selecting the beams. Right click, paste. Check the same wall load is pasted correctly. Click OK to save and exit. Examine the 2D and 3D view to ensure all wall loads are inserted correctly. You can also copy and paste loads in the main modeling view. Select a beam with wall load, right click, choose copy loads. The copy loads dialog will appear. The left pane is load case. The middle is load type. The right is the actual load name. They act as filter from left to right. For example, if you choose G load case and wall load then only wall loads will be shown if there are many loads types inserted. Ensure brick wall load is selected. Click OK. Multiple select the rest of the perimeter beams by holding down control key. Right click. Paste loads. The brick wall loads will be pasted.